The durability of concrete bridges and roads is related to time it takes for de-icing salts to reach the reinforcing steel. Resistivity is a measurement that can be used to estimate the amount of time this process will take. In addition to providing a surface that cars can travel across on a bridge deck, the concrete is there to protect the reinforcing steel. It's there to protect the reinforcing steel from de-icing salts that are applied in the winter to improve the traction for the traveling public. One way that we can make that concrete more resistant to the de-icing salt penetration is to make it as dense as possible. And one of the things that we want to do in this research is develop ways that we can measure this economically and rapidly. Many of the current tests that are out there take a very long time to, to perform and uh, are very expensive uh, to do. So one of the things that we've worked on is a very rapid electrical test of the concrete. The reason that this is important is the electrical properties of the concrete can really be related to the speed at which the ions move through the concrete. And the ions that we're most interested in in this particular case are the chloride ions that are coming from the de-icing salts. Measuring the electrical properties of concrete, specifically the resistivity, gives an indication to the speed at which the chloride ions are transported through the concrete. So our electrical resistivity test is going to be related to three main factors inside the concrete. It's going to be related to the porosity, how much holes, how many holes there are inside of the system. It's going to be related to how tortuous the porosity is, how wiggly the pores are. Are they straight from one side to the other? Or are they very tortuous? Or, and it's going to be related to the composition of the fluid that's inside of those pores. Currently, the concrete that goes into making roads and bridges is tested for strength shortly after production. Over the past century, Purdue's Joint Transportation Research Program has worked closely with INDOT to develop these tests and improve the quality of our state's roadways. As explained by Tony Zander, INDOT and Purdue have been leading the way in the development of new test methodologies that will consider the life cycle of our infrastructure. Currently and historically, and this is nationwide, uh, many highway agencies have adopted either some form of strength, be it compressive strength or flexural strength or split tensile, and certainly we've got a lot of ex experience with this, but it really isn't the best measure of the concrete's quality. So we need something to, um, uh, to get away from our emphasis on strength, because if we emphasize strength and we pay on strength, that's where the contractor will concentrate his efforts. Uh, if we can find a better property like resistivity and we will accept and or pay for that quality of concrete, the contractor will adopt to that and, and, and that's really what we want to encourage. The electrical resistivity tests have been used for a long time to measure the properties of different engineering materials. Early work began in the 1920s looking at the electrical properties of concrete. In addition, in the 1910s people were looking at the resistivity of soils. Over time, we've seen developments in the electrical property measurements. In the 1950s, people started doing this more frequently. In the 1970s and 80s, people started using variable frequency responses. But really what's driving this now is the ability to have handheld units that are battery operated that can be taken in the field and be used to measure these properties very quickly. The resistivity test itself is very uh, fundamentally based in science. We can use something called the Nernst-Einstein equation to directly relate the speed at which the ions are moving through the concrete to the electrical resistivity when we account for the properties of the pore solution and the speed of the ion itself in an open solution. This particular theory is referred to as the Nernst-Einstein equation. While resistivity can be related to the transport properties, there are additional testing details that Purdue University has highlighted that should be accounted for when interpreting test results. So in our research here at Purdue, we've identified three other factors um, that can significantly influence resistivity measurements in concrete. Um, these are the, re um, the temperature of the test specimen, um, the curing conditions of the specimen, and the geometry of the specimen. Um, we're exploring tools and options to account for this, and it's important to do so because we can end up with a true material property. While physical testing has benefits, the National Institute of Standards and Technology has developed computer models to measure the resistivity of virtual concrete. The virtual concrete computer models have the benefit that they can isolate factors such as moisture, microstructure, or mixture proportions to enable the influence of these factors to be clearly understood. 
Using resistivity testing as a rapid tool during the construction process helps to ensure the long-term durability of the concrete that is being produced. This can reduce the need for repairs and increase life cycle performance. We would like to thank all of those who were involved in the research and development of resistivity testing.